Let's look at set language and notation. So the definition we have is that a set is a collection of unordered items without repeats. And some of the key notes linked to sets are that we use curly brackets to denote sets. And these are the curly brackets we're referring to. And usually the items are in chronological order. This isn't necessary, but this is the usual way that sets are written. If we look at some examples of sets, so normally we call a set by a letter. So for instance, the set A could be the set of the following numbers. So one, two, and three. We use commas to distinguish between the items within the set. So one, two, and three are separate numbers within this set, which is called A. We could also have set B, and if I make this up, then again, we use curly brackets, and we could have this time minus one, zero, one, two. So notice how in the first set, we've got three items, that's one, two, and three. In the second set, we've got four items, so that's minus one, zero, one, and two. So the number of items within a set isn't limited. Might also use letters, so capital C, let's call that the following set. So if we have A, E, I, O, and U, then these are vowels within the alphabet, and this set has five items in it, A, E, I, O, U. Sometimes we might also see sets that use the following notation. So we have the brackets for our set, and then we have X, which is some number such that, so this could be using a straight line or a colon, so X such that X is even. This set means that we have any number such that that number is even. So for instance, in this set, we could have the number two, two is even. We could have four, four is even, we could have six, six is even, and so on. So this set would contain all of the even numbers. Sometimes we might also use an ellipse. So if we rewrite this set, we could have the set E, which is equal to zero, two, four, six, and then we use the ellipse at the end. So this indicates to us that we've got the following pattern, so we're adding two each time, and the ellipse indicates that this carries on forever. So this is the set of all even numbers. And then we might also have a mixture of all of these, so we don't necessarily have to always have whole numbers, we can have decimals, fractions, symbols, and so on. So we could have, for instance, 0 0.5, pi, 3 over 4, minus 5, and the letter B. And this would still be a valid set. And likewise, we could have words, negative numbers, and so on. So as long as our definition of a set is satisfied, then we could have all sorts of different sets.